let's see if this works. So, hello. It's National Suicide Awareness Day and I'm sorry for doing uh, so many Facebook Lives in quick succession. Just really want to get this done. <laughs> um, so on Friday, I want to see Neil Hilborn. This is his book, Our Numbered Days. It's amazing. He is a poet, um, creative writing, just just unbelievable. And he was supported by local poet, da, 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 da. Sven Steve, Stevens. His new book is out in October, and I believe it is called, sorry, this isn't an apology. I went with the amazing Gemma and the amazing Yestin to both of you wonderful people. We made a new friend, Liam. Liam, uh, we need to meet up with him. He was lovely. So Sven finished his set and Gemma marched straight up to him and was like, you. He uh, was giving me his contact details and we might be doing an event together, which would be amazing, uh, which just would be unbelievable. Both of these guys suffer with mental health issues and being stood in that room and hearing these words just makes you go like, oh. You know, people know how I feel. Um, so I want to read you one of Neil's poems on World Suicide Awareness Day. And if you are a fan of his or will become, I apologise because I am a rubbish at reading out loud. You can ask my kids. And secondly, I will never, ever perform it like they do because they lived this. This is their, like, this is their words. So I'm going to read you a poem called Joey from his debut book, Our Numbered Days. Neil, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, is a college national poetry slam champion and a 2011 graduate with honours from Malcaster College with a degree in creative writing. He was a member of the Manchester College Slam team which ranked first in the 2011 National Poetry Slam Colleges and he co-coached the 2012 team, leading them to second place to finishing, ah I've lost it, finished second nationally. He was also a member of the Minneapolis Adult National Poetry Slam team in 2011, which placed fifth out of 80 teams from across the country at the Adult National Poetry Slam. He's the co-writer of The Thistle, a Malcaster Literally magazine, Liter literally, literacy uh, magazine, and runs writing workshops and performs around the country at Club Evo Bach. We got very annoyed when people called it Welsh Club. It's Club. Okay, so I'm going to read you Joey. You may know him, like I said, from his very famous poem that kind of went viral about him. Uh, the worst thing about being knocked down by a car when you're naked, uh, waking up is, is road rash. You should Google that. It's called The Future. It's amazing. So I apologise for massacring Joey, the poem. Um, so yeah, it just felt very apt on National Suicide Awareness Day uh, to read this to you guys. So I apologise now. Joey by Neil Hilborn from his debut book, Our Numbered Days, available on Amazon and all good bookstores. Not even being paid for that. Joey always told me, laughing as though it was actually a joke, that he wanted to kill himself, but it was never the right time. There were always groceries to be bought and little brothers to be tucked in at night. Don't worry, Joey isn't going to kill himself 20 more lines into this poem. That's not the kind of story that I'm telling you here. Joey got a pro promotion, and now he can afford Prozac. Joey is Joe now. Joe is a cold engine in which none of the parts complain. Joe is a brick someone made out of fossils. If you remove money from the equation, Joey would have been, a, would have been painting elk on cave walls. People would have fed him and kept him away from those high places because, God damn, look at those elk. I think that the genes for being an artist and mentally ill aren't just related, but they're the same. But try telling that to the bill collector. When we were 17 and I drove us all to punk shows in a station wagon older than all of us, we were 17 and I bought lunch for Joey on more than one occasion. Sorry, that says we were 17 and I bought Joey more, lunch for Joey more often than I didn't. We were 17, and one time Joey tried to talk to me about being depressed when someone else was around, and I told him to shut the hell up and asked if he needed to change his tampon. You know that moment when a cartoon character realises that he's three steps off the cliff, and he takes a long look at the audience, like we're carrying the last moving box out of a half-empty house? Joey looked like that. Without a puff of smoke. He just played video games for half an hour and then went home. 
Once I found Joey in my dad's office, staring at the safe where he knew he kept the guns. Once Joey moulded his car into the shape of a tree trunk and refused to give the reason why. Once I caught Joey in biology class, staring at his scalpel like he wanted to be the frog, splayed out wide, open, so honest. There was one difference between me and Joey. When we got arrested, bell money was waiting for me at the station. When I was hungry, I ate. When I wanted to open myself up and see what was really rattling, see if there was bees rattling around in there, my parents got me a therapist. I can pinpoint the session that brought me back into the world. That session cost $75. $75 is two weeks of groceries. It's a month of bus fare. It's not even a school year's worth of new shoes. It took weeks of $75 to get to that one that saved my life. We both had parents that believed us when we said we weren't okay, but mine could afford to do something about it. I wonder how many kids like Joey wanted to die and were unlucky enough to actually pull it off. How many of those kids had someone who cared about them but also had to pay rent? I am so lucky right now that I am not describing Joey's funeral. I'm so lucky we all lived through who we were to become who we are. I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. Um, I love that because it's World Suicide Day and it just sums it up. Different people have different help and it shouldn't be dependent on who you are and what you can afford. So know that there are places you can reach out and talk to us. You can reach out and talk to the Blurt Foundation. You can reach out and talk to your friends. And even if they do say, like Neil did, go change your tampon. 17 year old lads, talk again. Talk again, because they love you.